The unity of the tripartite alliance has been the subject of fierce debates. Trade Union Federation Kosatu and the South African Communist Party have delivered a stinging rebuke of the party, saying their continued association is eroding their credibility. They're also making strong calls for those implicated in corruption to be arrested. The party's 15th National Congress is taking place in Boxburg on Johannesburg's East Rand. Dr. Stimbiso Bengu, Chris Hani Institute Director, joins me now to share his perspective on the now and the future of not only the alliance, but the SACP itself. Dr. Bengu, Dr. Bengu good evening, and thank you very much for joining Full View. We played for our viewers there just a few minutes ago um, that you know, rousing and determined address uh, by the president of the ANC to the Congress. Um, he, you know, he's fighting hard and he's bringing fighting talk. How do you view that message delivered in that context where his own future has been fiercely debated? Uh, good evening to you and good evening to, uh, to the viewers. Uh, indeed, it was uh, a confident message uh, from the president of the ANC. Um, I, I, mean, I think for us uh, in the analysis, the, 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 the important part, by the way, was the first part in which the president highlighted, uh, identified the crisis of the South African economy primarily centered on the, 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 the monopoly nature of our economy. Um, and uh, it was also quite, uh, it was quite voiceful in his expression around uh, not being able to be deterred, uh, uh, especially in the context of the current need now to put implementation in plan to actually prosecute those who are uh, implicated in the issues of corruption, state capture. And, uh, and so while the speech was quite uh, exuberant, it would be interesting to see uh, whether it is followed by actual implementation, actual beginning of prosecution taking place, uh, 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 court processes initiating uh, so that it becomes more, uh, uh, more than just uh, expressions. It sounds like what you're saying there is there's still, uh, you know, cautious reserve, um, you know, against the president or towards the president and the ANC in this regard. Um, maybe caution in the sense that uh, 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 the, the current ruling ANC has been in power obviously for now almost four years. Uh, we haven't seen much, uh, and the, the right at the beginning uh, of the entry of the current administration in, in 2019, uh, fighting corruption, recovering uh, some of the losses from that corruption, and essentially getting those that are implicated. Uh, to be prosecuted and essentially extending the arm of the law. And so that has not taken place as yet. And, and so uh, 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 while it is good to hear good attestations uh, from the president, we are, uh, 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 I think it will be, it will give even more confidence if there can be more decisive implementation action that essentially begins to see uh, 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 right. court processes initiating people being prosecuted. So the outgoing national chairperson, Senzeni Zokwana, uh, emphasizing the need for the unity of the alliance, uh, despite sentiments in the SACP that the ANC appeared to be undermining the organization. Which do you believe really comes first for the SACP, its survival or that of the alliance? Uh, what is important for the SACP from what emanates from the Congress uh, is both. Essentially, uh, I think because of the nature of the history of the ANC, sorry, of the SACP. By the way, the history of the South African Communist Party as a Marxist-Leninist organization, uh, uh, very much grounded in understanding alliances between uh, communist parties and nationalist progressive organizations. Um, understanding the fact that South Africa continues to be in many cases, a bourgeois democracy. And so the notion of probably the Communist Party going alone electorally uh, 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 will be, if that happens and the, and the SSAP wins, that will actually be the very first in the entire world, in the entire history of communism in the entire world. And so I think those dynamics 
are playing out the, this very awareness. Uh, and so which is why in many cases right. for the leaders of the, of the SSP, the alliance is an important aspect. Well, you know, you touched on the what next for the SACP, and I think the notion you put on the table now is almost as strong as clutching smoke, because in, in my, certainly in my experience as a journalist, I think if I recall two decades ago, now I'm giving my age away, um, I remembered the first rumblings of the SACP saying, we will go it alone, we will contest elections on our own. Why do you think the SACP is persisting with this narrative where it, it, it you know, it, it's not new and nothing has happened to follow this up? Well, at, at this current Congress, uh, they are framing uh, the political discussion around building a movement for socialism. Uh, and essentially, it seems to be grounded around building what they call a, pro a broader left, frost, left front involving workers, involving the poor, unemployed communities, uh, churches, faith organizations, essentially broader aspects of society. Uh, and, and so that could be the beginnings of then the ability of the Communist Party to engage a much more broader base of society to essentially then uh, uh, chant an alternative path. Uh, 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 and, uh, and, 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 and I think in the expressions, uh, the argument was that uh, the challenge the next five years so of the 15th Congress is to build this movement for socialism, which involves all these uh, broad forces, uh, not just trade unions, but communities, almost UDF kinds of UDF 2.0, I mean, in many senses. Let's quickly talk, uh, you know, the SACP currently, you know, if I recall the last time um, we checked what its membership was, around 300,000 members around the country. Do you think that's a formidable base? And in answering that question, reflect also on the fact that you have an SG who after almost 25 years at the helm is now buying out. What's the legacy that he leaves, particularly in terms of growing the base, which he has claimed, you know, he's been a, a strong proponent of uh, growing the base and actually going it alone? Well, the SSP, obviously, if you remember, in 1994, uh, had about, at most, 10,000 members. Uh, and by 1998, probably, they had grown to about, uh, but still less than 25,000. Uh, and, and so, uh, and the 300,000 members, by the way, it's important to note, that's a, that has been the number probably since about post-2007. Um, and, and so, there has been growth. Um, there has been growth in numbers, uh, uh, and obviously the party itself does acknowledge the fact that uh, maybe the growth in numbers does not has not necessarily been uh, complemented by also growth in what generally they will call building cadres. Uh, uh, and so there has been growth in numbers, uh, but it's important also to in analysis because. The similar trajectory that has happened to the Communist Party, you will also find in trade unions in, in, right. in post apartheid South Africa. So you, so you saw this massive growth up until about 2005, 2007, uh, and then there's been a stagnation. Uh, so both in the Communist Party, but also even in South, African, in South African trade unions. And so you can see that the trend is actually more general uh, uh, within worker organizations and worker formations. Uh, 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 and, uh, and so in many ways, uh, for me, I think the significance of the era of uh, Dr. Blayton Zemande, uh, 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 more than just the issue of growing the party, uh, uh, is essentially being uh, an, an intellectual voice as an alternative to austerity measures here, for instance, that was quite key in the ANC. Okay. And so that has enabled the party to almost consistently become the alternative voice. Dr. Bengu, thank you very much for your time and for your analysis. Uh, you're at the Congress as well. I wanted to ask you a little bit more, but perhaps uh, you know, we'll hear more about uh, that as it, as it draws to a close. Thank you for talking to us, Dr. Stembiso uh, Bengu, who is the director of the Chris Hani Institute.